Hello, Math Study students, and welcome to your online lesson. We'll be continuing our discussion of sequences, but this time we're moving on to geometric sequences. Our learning intention is to identify and show if a sequence is geometric and create a formula, also known as the general term, of a geometric sequence. That should be very similar to what we did for arithmetic sequences. We'll know we're successful if we can correctly identify a sequence as geometric, create a formula for that sequence, and use that formula to generate terms. A quick reminder about our definitions of sequences. We've already looked at arithmetic sequences. Those are a pattern of numbers or a list of numbers where the uh, each new term or each new number or member of the sequence is a result of adding a constant value, also known as the common difference, to get the next term. So we've looked at a few examples of that. Well, now what we're going to be looking at is a geometric sequence. That's where we're multiplying a fixed number to get the next term. So an example of that is I can start with a random number like 2, and let's pick a common uh, multiple that we're going to multiply this by, which we'll refer to later as a ratio, and let's say I do 3. So the next term, 2 times 3, would get me up to 6, and the next term after that would be 18, and so on and so forth. I'm simply multiplying the same value to each previous term to get the next term. And so that's geometric. Again, arithmetic, we were adding like adding the number 3 over and over to get each new term, here we are multiplying. And again, I also wrote or divided, but that would really just be multiplying by a fraction, which would result in the same thing as if we had divided by a value. So like with arithmetic sequences, we do have formulas. Um, a geometric sequence is formed if each term can be obtained from the previous one by multiplying the same non-zero constant, which we call a common ratio. The common ratio is going to be abbreviated as R. And if you look back to that last uh, little example I was giving where I had 2 and then I had uh, 6 and then I had 18, I can show that common ratio by dividing backwards. Ratio in math class is dividing. And so if I take a term like u sub 1, the first term, I can divide that into 1 higher than that. This would be u sub n plus 1. If my n was 1, it would be u sub 2, the second term, dividing backwards the first term. Or if I started with the second term, I would be dividing into that the third term, and I can show that right here. So let's do this first one, where I take the second term and divide the first term. So that would be 6 divided by 2, which gives me my common ratio of 3. Now, it's not common until I can show that it occurs for all members of the sequence. So now I can take the third term and divide backwards the second term. So I would take 18 and divide by 6, and that would equal 3. Just like finding a common difference for an arithmetic sequence where we subtracted backwards, this is the only way that you can technically show or prove that a sequence is geometric in an IB exam. You have to divide backwards to show that there is a common ratio and that is then, therefore, a geometric sequence. We also have a general term, which is like our formula for a geometric sequence. Very similar to the arithmetic sequences, we need to plug in two values. The two values that we need to plug in are u sub 1, also known as our first term, and then our common ratio, which again we find that by dividing backwards any, any two terms. All right, so let's take a look at an example utilizing this formula. So this first example says, show the following sequence is geometric, and hence find the 12th term. Well, how do we show that a sequence is geometric? We divide backwards. So we want to show there's this common ratio. So I'm going to take the second term and divide backwards the first term. So we'll take 12 divided by 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. And now I can do the same thing with the third term dividing the second term. So I would have 48 divided by 12, which again gives me 4. Or I could take the fourth term, 192, and divide by the previous term, which is 48, and that gives me 4. So you'll notice I get the same thing every time. So I have a ratio, one number divided by a number, another number that is 4, and it's the same, which shows that this is a geometric sequence, assuming that they've given me enough numbers to identify what that pattern is. So we have a common ratio of 4. I'm going to write that down, and at this point I have shown that it's geometric by showing that common ratio. So R is equal to 4. 
And the next thing I want to do is find the 12th term. Well, in order to find the 12th term, what I could do is I could do this a long way. I could take 192 and then multiply by 4 to get the 5th term, and then whatever number that is, multiply by 4 to get the 6th term, and keep going on and on and on until I get to the 12th term, which isn't that high, and I could probably do this in about the same amount of time it'll take me to explain the formula. But what if it's the 112th term? Then there'd be a lot of work to do, plus a lot of potential for making a simple mistake, either on my calculator or miscount or something along those lines. So instead, what we're going to use is our formula, which is u sub n, or the nth term is equal to our first term times our common ratio to the power of n minus 1. And again, all that's saying is that we're going to keep multiplying a certain number of ratios, um, and the n minus 1 will tell us how many times we're going to multiply that with our first term. So in order to write a general term, there's two things that we need to plug in. The first one is our first term, and the second thing we need to plug in is our common ratio. Well, I know both of those values. My first term is 3, and my common ratio is 4, so I can plug those in now. I will have u sub n is equal to 3, our first term, times 4 to the n minus 1. Now, in my formula, there was no time symbol because when you have two variables like u sub 1 and r next to each other, it's implied that they're multiplied together. Just like if I wrote x, y, or even a number like 3x, I assume those are getting multiplied together. Well, if I write this 3 and this 4 next to each other, it is not implied that they are multiplying together because it uh, looks kind of like a 34 to the n minus 1 power. Now, sometimes we'll use a dot for multiplication. Sometimes we'll use a little x, um, the old school time symbol. My problem with either of those is the dot can look like a decimal, and the uh, little x can actually look like an x. So I'm just going to use a parenthesis here to show that these are getting multiplied together. And a reminder, you have to do order of operations, which means we have to do our exponents before we can actually do the 3. So you can't like distribute this 3 ahead of time. So that's as much as I can simplify this um, general term. All right, again, I plugged in my first term and my common ratio. Now I want to find the 12th term. So I'm simply going to plug in a 12 now. So I'm looking for the 12th term. So u sub Again, sub like a submarine, a low subscript, 12, u sub 12. The 12th term is equal to our first term times our common ratio to the power of n, which is 12, the number that we're looking for, minus 1. So that's going to be 3 times 4 to the 11th power. And again, the calculator will do the order of operations for you, so you don't need to worry about that. But if we do this in two steps, we would have to do 4 to the 11th power first and then multiply by 3. So I'm going to enter it into my calculator now. And it comes out to a very large number, which is very typical with these because we are dealing with exponents and multiplying. And again, even by the fourth term, we were already well into the hundreds. By our sixth term, we'd be well into the thousands. So we end up having here... Uh, 12,582,912. So again, 12,582,912. And that is our 12th term, or u sub 12. You'll also notice that IB exams will often not use commas to separate their numbers. They'll put a little space. So they'll have 12, 582, 912. So that's also an acceptable way to see these answers, but here in our class, we are most familiar with writing them that way. All right. So we're going to do one last example here in this video lesson. And this one, it's really the same exact thing. Show that the following sequence is geometric, hence find the 12th term, so the directions are exactly the same, but I've just given a totally different kind of number sequence. Um, because we have these negatives involved and we have square roots. Now this is really interesting to look at. Our first term is positive and then we jump to a negative and then we're back to a positive and then we jump to a negative. And this can happen when you have a negative ratio because you're going to be multiplying by a negative number which will constantly change the sign back and forth. And the other weird thing is these radical twos or square roots of two. Um, and so a quick reminder what a square root is a square root is saying what number um, times itself would equal 2. Now, that's really easy if I do something like the square root of 4, because what number times itself would equal 4? Well, that would be 2. Or if we were dealing with negatives, it could also be a negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 would also equal 4. But in this case, we would end up with this ugly number of 1.41, something, something, something. And when we're doing a sequence, we don't want to be rounding every single time, so we'd like to keep it exact. So I'm not really going to reach for a calculator, maybe at all in this problem, or at least not until the very last step. 
So we'll see what we can do to sort of figure this out. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is find our common ratio. And again, for our common ratio, we divide second term divided by the first term. Well, this is easy enough because I can see that ignoring the square root of 2 altogether, 8 over 16, both 8 and 16 have a 1 that goes into that. So that's going to become negative 1 square roots of 2 over 2. Again, because I divided an 8 out of both the 8 and the 16. And then 1 times square root of 2 just becomes square root of 2 over 2. So that's a negative there. Now, to make my life easier, I'm actually going to jump to the last two terms uh, and divide those. So I have negative 4 square roots of 2 all over 8. Once again, there's a single negative sign here. And 4 and 8 both have a common divisor of 4, or a greatest common divisor of 4. And so they will also turn into negative 1 square root of 2 over 2, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. And so I do have a common ratio I can see here. Now I could go through the steps to actually show how the, um, the second and third terms, and I can show that here for a quick moment. Um, and if you get a little lost on this, don't worry too much about it because it's... Um, a little more complicated than what we necessarily need to do. But as I go through this, I have the 8s that are going to cancel out. I have 1 over square root of 2. The problem is that doesn't look like what we had here. And it also has a radical in the denominator, which is not a common thing. So I ask myself, what could I multiply a number by that would turn the square root of 2 into a 2? Well, essentially, if I squared it, so if I multiply it by itself, the square roots will cancel out, leaving just 2. But whatever I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. And so I will see these two denominators, square root of 2 squared, essentially. The squares and the square roots cancel out. And then in the numerator, I have negative square root of 2. So as you can see, a common ratio. It's the exact same for every one of these. All right, so I now know that it's geometric, even though it's got these weird values. I have a common ratio of square root of 2 over 2 that was negative. And now it's time to use my formula. So I have u sub n, the nth term, is equal to u sub 1, the first term, uh, times our common ratio to the power of n minus 1. That's our formula. Again, it's in our IB formula packet as well. And so now I'm going to fill in the two things I need. I need the first term, and I need our common ratio. So I'm going to have u sub n is equal to our first term, 16, times our common ratio, negative square root of 2 over 2 to the power of n minus 1. And you'll notice here I put the, the ratio in parentheses because I want to make sure that that numerator, that negative, and that denominator are all getting taken to the power of n minus 1. So now what are we actually looking for? We're looking for the 12th term. Well, the 12th term, that's our term number, so that's going to be our n. So I'll have u sub 12, the 12th term, is equal to 16 times negative square root of 2 over 2, all to the power of 12 minus 1, also known as 11. And now I'm going to plug that into my calculator, um, and we'll get an answer. So essentially what I have is that 12th term is equal to 16 times negative square root of 2 over 2 to the 11th power. And because there's 11 of the square root of 2 over 2s getting multiplied together, there's going to be one leftover radical, which means we're going to end up with a decimal. And so this is going to be approximately um, negative 0.35355, and it goes on and on and on. We want to round to three significant figures, so that would give us negative 0.35. Four as our 12th term approximately. If I wanted to leave it exact, what I'd have to do is come back here and think of this. Okay, I've got 11 negative square root of 2 over 2 is all getting multiplied together. I could rewrite that as 16 times negative square root of 2 over 2 and take 10 of those and then just say I have one more of those, which would be my 11th one. And when I multiply just this stuff in the calculator, since there's an even number of radicals, that doesn't come out to this crazy repeating decimal, or non-repeating decimal, I guess, to be more accurate. And this just comes out to 1 half. And then this is still the same thing we had here, so negative square root of 2 over 2. 
And then I can multiply this really easily. A positive times a negative gives me a negative. So I'd have negative square root of 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So that would be an exact value of that answer. All right. So even if we were a little confused on the radicals and the square roots and things like this, hopefully at least we saw that the same thing was getting done here where we were plugging in our first term, plugging in our common ratio, and doing the same sorts of steps. Also, hopefully we saw some similarities between what we had been doing previously with arithmetic sequences. It's just a slightly different formula and a slightly different pattern. In our next video, we'll look at a couple other different examples. Till next time.